Okay. We are going to focus. And today what we're going to do is review all the Marvel comic books, which I have. And I'm going to see if I could go a little faster. But I found the book, which I was looking for yesterday, but I couldn't find it. And it was somewhere in a corner in my room that I, I forgot that I was looking at. A lot, I think it was like last week, but I forgot where I put it. So I finally found it. And I know you guys are already familiar with this book. But I'm not going to go through all the pages. What I want to show you is the head. And uh, maybe I might go back and do this book over again in the future. But what we're focusing now is the head. All right. So this is the thing, people. When they did this book, and like I told you, I met an editor that told me that this book wasn't a very, very good book to learn. That he actually told me the best books were George Bridgman, you know, Andrew Loomis, and, you know, and to actually um, study from life, you know, to use reference. And just in case, if I sound a little bit tired, guys, it's because I just came from work and I just ate something. So, you know, when you eat something, you get tired. So... I'm going to try to do this video and I'm going to try to fight it because <laughs> I feel tired and I should be sleeping. But anyway, let me explain something to you guys. If you notice this, what does this look like? Sort of like the George Bridgman and the Hogarth method. That's what it looks like. Okay. So that's what I pretty much what I was explaining yesterday <clears throat> when we were doing this technique yesterday. You see, it's like the Hogarth a little bit different, of course, but it's right. It's, I mean, if you look at it, it's just like Hogarth. So I did a, a little, uh, you know, the same, yeah, the same illustration. I did it right here. See, what I did was I did <clears throat> a vertical line first, right? And then I did a horizontal line for the eye. Okay, so the eye is going to be right here. Then a horizontal line for the nose, horizontal line for the mouth. And then, of course, this is a little bit more because usually the men's chin is a little bigger. It's not like the woman's um, the chin. So then after that, I did the same thing like uh, the Hogarth. I just did the planes up like that. And this will be the eyebrow line right here. Then I closed it right here. This over here, just like I explained over here yesterday when we were doing the um, the segments yesterday, we actually visualize this as the socket, the socket of the eyes. So that's what this is, okay? Now, of course, this is sort of like um, comic book style. He did the ears and all that. Um, what I would have been, it would have been better if he would have done half of the method here and then the finished drawing over here, like that you can actually see the construction lines, but you know, do the, the cheek line over here, you know, the dimple part, the muzzle part of the mouth. And then the eyes would probably be set like around here. See, that's what he should have done. But you know, they made this book. I don't know if they did it too fast or maybe they probably didn't use their head. And I always say to myself that Marvel will not, I don't think they'll ever do a perfect book on um, how to draw the Marvel way. Let's see, maybe in the future they will. If anything, they should actually write me a letter and I'll be more than happy to actually um, manage the book. Because really the way they did this book, you know, it's more like for advanced artists. Even the editor told me that it's not a book it's not a great book to learn because this is more for advanced artists that people that already studied, you know, Loomis, uh, Norman Rockwell, people that studied Bridgman and Hogarth. OK, because if you look at all these techniques, you know, they they're very similar to Loomis and they're very similar to Hogarth. This is more like Hogarth and Loomis at the same time. So that's what they should have done. Explain 
you know, when they actually wrote their paragraphs. So that way, any artist or any beginner that's trying to study how to draw the Marvel way, or just simply learning how to draw the heads and uh, figures, all they had to do, which I'm really disappointed with that, that they should have wrote down, if you look at the head, it kind of looks like the Hogarth method. I could actually imagine either, yes, yeah, Stan Lee or John Buscema actually was say it, including in their video, because they actually made a video uh, in memory of this book. Because I think this book was like maybe five years before they did the video, I think. I'm not really sure. So that's what I'm trying to say. Because if this looks like a Hogarth technique, and it very similar to uh, Loomis, and you know, that's all they had to do, explain it. So that way the artist or the beginner would just do more hunting and look for more books like on Andrew Loomis. Speaking of Andrew Loomis, I think I'm going to order um, his three books. I think it's four books. Um, it, I saw it on Amazon for a good price. Hopefully they still have it. If not, I'm just going to have to order it um, separately. Like, But I'm definitely going to get the Andrew Loomis, all the Andrew Loomis books. Okay, so let's continue with this book. Um, so here we have, you know, more heads over here. And, of course, this is all comic book style. That's me. I actually drew, you know, which in, this is a very, very old book. So in the, the first books I used to get, I used to draw over them. And uh, my latest books that I'm getting now are not drawing no more on my books. So now we have more, you know, paper. That's a good thing. But back then, they didn't have any typing paper or um, I would say office paper to draw because that's what I use, office paper to draw. So, so yeah, back then it was really different. But it's all comic book style faces, you see. And you can tell they have different sizes and different poses of faces. And here we have the woman right here, the profile. I don't know why they started first with a profile. They should have started with the front view. But yeah, the front view comes afterwards. You can see it's mainly an oval shape. And it tells you draw the usual eye line right here. <coughs> And then after that, you start working with, uh, how do you call it, draw the, uh, I don't know what that is, the equatorial, oh yeah, the triangle, the triangle method. You draw the triangle method. And I've shown you the other day, there was another technique that I showed you that is something very similar to this, but it's a, it's a little different, but I don't mind showing you guys again, it doesn't matter. So it's something like this. Uh, this would be a head shape. Sort of like an egg, an egg shape. So uh, this would be the eye line right here. And then this would be the nose and then the mouth right here. So the technique is something like this. See? Actually, the guy draws the eyes first. Because that's what I noticed. He drew the eyes first. Like that. And then he did the triangle. And then from that triangle up here, he did another line here, which is the eyebrow line. So you could do it this way, or you could simply, you know, do it this way. That you could just um, do the triangle from the center of the eyes here. And notice that the triangles are going directly down. And that would be where the mouth is. Because it tells you after you do the triangle, uh, from the outside of the eyes to the center of the line, the face, place the cheek lines and indicate the area for the mouth. You see? Right there. These are the cheek lines right here. And then he does the mouth. But first, he does the triangle to figure out where the proportions are. So here's a, you know, half-finished drawing that he did. He did more shape to the face. And then after that, he did more details here it tells you pretty much everything here and then after that he added hair okay so yeah it's a, i think it would be a very simple um way of doing the head and of course um 
Let's let's do the same thing. See how how it turns out. Now I'm gonna try to you know explain most of these books, but it has to do with the time I have, and it's only that I gotta get some rest, um, because I am a little bit tired. But yeah, today I'm really you know feeling it, and then when you eat, forget it, man. It makes you more tired because I ate. Uh, a salad with some meat and then after that I ate um, a pumpkin pie with whipped cream and that really did it I just really I passed out a little bit on the couch and then um, I said wait a minute man I, I gotta you know start doing another video it's like I'm addicted doing to you know videos but I am feeling a little bit tired okay so you know he did the eyes right and then he did the triangle. So that's what we're going to do. We're doing the triangle. And then he says, of course, let's shape the... Wow, those planes. They really come close to the house. Okay, the cheekbones would be around like this. And then the mouth would be around here. So that's what he did. Okay. Then after that, what he did was the nose. Then the eyebrows. So it looks a little bit like it. Yeah. And here's the ears. Same level from the um, eyelids to the nose. Right. So yeah, it looks a little bit kind of, let's, let's look at it in a way, yeah. Let me sharpen this a little bit, just that way I can get a good fine point on my pencil. <clears throat> and then just finish maybe half so you can see this other half right here. So I'm just going to finish half. And I'm not going to do too much details, I'm just going to do some details. So in a way I'm doing it like how John Buscema draws his face. And for those newbies, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows who John Buscema is, um, he is Marvel's greatest comic book artist. Right there. And then let's uh, go to the more finished process. Yeah, pretty much like I've been explaining to you guys that you could use a triangle method all the way down to where the mouth is. That'll give you the length of the mouth right there, see? And then we could shape. Let's do, let's, uh, yeah, let's do some hair on her. It, it looks a little bit like how John Buscema does it, right? So far, so good. And then we'll do, let me see how he, yeah, the iris. So not only I'm going to do it like John Buscema, but if I have to change something, I will, just to make it more easier to understand. Because maybe you guys don't know how John Buscema approaches his faces, especially the women. Okay, so I'm going to do half so you can see the other half here. And I will post this because it this came out pretty good. So um, I just got to remember because I did so many drawings yesterday. I don't know which one I'm going to post, but I got to look at all of them and review them and to see which one i actually started let me see something oh, okay these are the uh yeah i gotta be careful with this because i made a big mess here oh. all right yeah these are the drawings i was going to fix before which i'm going to definitely do um a tutorial correcting my drawings 
I'm gonna see how that goes. But I gotta make sure I'm gonna get the good drawings that I did. And um all right, this one is okay. Alright. Yeah, these are all okay, these are all the techniques that we did here. Yeah, these are the ones I gotta fix. Yeah, yeah I will fix this. Whenever I get a chance, and let me get this because I gotta review this later. There's so many stuff that I did all this week. Some of them I didn't post yet, so but I want to correct them first before I post it. Yeah, we'll review it. Don't worry, it's not gonna take that long. All right, this uh, right here. These are the techniques. Yeah, I want to separate the techniques, you know, the papers that I, and then the finished drawings, I'm definitely going to work that out later on. All right, let's see. A lot of stuff I got to fix here, guys. Yep, okay. All right, going back to this, uh, I think she's Sue from the Fantastic Four. All right, let's go back. So her neck would be around here where the eye level is. So yeah, it came out pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do this in ink right here. Um, let me see if I can find. Actually, I'll do it later because um, there's more stuff to show you guys. So I'm going to put this at a side right here. And then we'll continue. Okay. Let's look at the rest of the book here. We got more expressions right here. Using the same method, of course, but remember, um, John Buscema explains it right here that just by changing some parts of the face, you can do expressions, you see? Here's another expression here. She's sad or scared, I think. And this is more like an evil or smart, you know, like an evil... I would say, I don't know, fiendish look. And this is more like a voluptuous look, I, I would say, you know, like a sexy uh, expression. And this is, this is definitely scared right here. And this is more like surprised. And this is when you're aging your, you know, your faces or you want to make it look, oh yeah, this is more like the villain type. If you want to draw the woman like a, a villain. So they're giving you an idea how to do it step by step. And here we have the eyes. And of course the eyes. Um, usually Romero actually uh, does it. You know the three line method. Um, this is more like the classical style. Um... This is a bad eye. You don't want to do an eye like that, okay? Never do an eye like that. And this eye is more like droopy, so that's no-no. And then here we have the profile. This is bad, no good, and this is awful. And then we have the noses. This is more better. I actually put a check on this. And this is bad, bad, and bad. Bad, 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 bad. This is the correct way how to draw the eyes. And notice that it's, you know, the swing, the flow of the um, eyelashes. And uh, I remember that the editor in Marvel Comics told me that usually, you know, because I did the same thing on one of my drawings that he saw, but he criticized it. He told me that the eyelashes has to come out more, more details on the eyelashes. And then especially in the bottom. So let, let's do this and let's make it um, like a real eye should look like. 
we'll use the back of this. Let me see if I actually, yeah. Let's trace over it so you'll see what I mean. This would be the shape of the eye, okay? So we're gonna do the rhythm, the flow of the eyelash. Here's the tear duct. And then we'll do the iris of the eye. And then the pupil. And then we'll add the um, eyebrows right here. Okay. Let's make sure we get that correct. So this time I'm tracing something here. But the reason why I'm doing this is because that way I can show you that the editor told me, and he, he actually show, showed me a picture of this book also when I went to Marvel Comics a long time ago, um, that it's better to do the eyeliner of the eye, right? But hair, you know, tiny eyelashes coming out from the bottom right here, okay? Then he also told me that every iris... Every pupil has a highlight, okay? And then, let's make this a little darker and just bring it out just a little bit out. Okay, so what he told me is that the eyelashes has to come out more, see, like this. A little bit to where the center is, like that, see? And that when you're doing the eye, of course, you need to do the eyelid and there's sort of like you know more details and that's what he told me that day when he saw the way I drew the eyes but I was trying to copy Marvel Comics and he said that no it's better to study Loomis and Bridgman and Hogarth okay so after that you know, you add more details. Now, I'm pretty sure that um, John Buscema would do eyes like this, but he was just giving you a demonstration. So whenever you get this book, don't go by to everything you see in the book. You are going to make this better like this, you see? And that's a real eye right there. And you can trace over it if you want, just to practice. And then, you know, later on, you do it on your own. Okay? So let's do, like I said, this is wrong right here. So this is better right here. So let's um, do this one. Let's trace over it. And I know I never trace, but sometimes I do, just to give you an explanation how this is done. This is the eyebrow, and right here is the eye. And it's sort of like a little curve for the iris there, okay? So let's go this way now, so you can see from the book. So what I'm going to do is make this more interesting. I'm going to add more eyelashes. And I'm going to exaggerate it too much because the bottom of the eye is less eyelashes. And then right here, right here, like that. See, just a little bit like that. Then add the uh, eyelid. And I think I, I should have made this. Well, hold on a second. Let me get my eraser. Because I think I did it too low near the eye because there's a distance. But you can tell he did something right here. So, all right, so let's do it the way he did it. All right, right there, see? Okay, so which looks better, this one, right? Why is because we added more details and that's what the editor, which that was a very, very long time and I can't remember his name. But he was the one that was reviewing all the uh, 
you know, the portfolios from every artist that came in. So that is the correct eye to do, okay? So let's look at the lips. And I've told you many times how to do the lips. And you can tell right here, let me use it, I don't wanna mess this up. For example, if you look at the lip, it's like a stretch M shape, but then it curves because my lips, the way I would do a lip, um, let me see. So, um, I would probably do it like this. I do the bottom of the lip. And then if I were to do something like that, I would start from the top here. And then I shape it into an M shape, but like, like a stretched M shape. But since I want to make it like this, I'm going to have to give it a curve. A curve over here. And then the outline of the lip, see? Right there. Then I'll correct the bottom of the lip. It, it kind of looks a little bit like the John Buscema's lip a little bit, not that much. But I usually, you know, I got to practice to add when I do lips. I got to do more curve on the lips. Plus, Romero always shows us that doing oval shapes in the bottom of the lips gives it a more appealing look for the lip. More sexy, more... Um, Beluxious, you know. Now that's a bad lip right there. You know, that's more like I would say more like cartooning, you know, like those regular funny cartoons or something. Yeah, you could get away with that. But if you're going to draw real comic book, you know, realistic faces, then you might as well do it like this. That's the correct way right here. So um, this one, that's a bad lip. And usually sometimes I do it like that sometimes. Sometimes I end up, you know, when I'm rushing, sometimes I'll do the lip too straight. This is better because it has a nice curve, you see? So always pay attention to when you're doing your lips. And like I've mentioned before, and it shows you right here, that when you're drawing a profile lip, the upper lip comes out more, and the bottom lip is a little bit further in. So that's why he does this slanted line which I sh I've shown you guys many times, you know, this trick actually works when you're doing profile lips. This is a very bad lip. And you don't want to end up doing a lip like this with the chin coming out in the front. So that's bad, very bad. All right, so let's uh, keep looking at the books. I'm sorry, this is whole book because I just got to... Okay, here we have more faces. And you could tell it's more like a Loomis style, you see? Very luminous, except that it doesn't give you the idea of the whole circle, but it's a round shape, okay? Here we have more faces done in ink. You know, these are different parts of comic book stories or something. All right, so let's keep going. Composition, let's skip that. Okay, let's skip all this stuff because I already explained this way, way back about composition and all that. Okay, that's it. Because my main concern is the face and the heads. All right, so let's look at this book, which I promised. And this one, we're going to actually review everything because I, I don't think I um, review uh, anything from this book. So I, I still got like three more books to show, my Lord. Hopefully I got time. All right, let me get, my, let me get some drink because I'm kind of losing my voice. Hold on. This is really good, guys. Aloe vera with chia. It's like sort of like watermelon seeds, and it tastes like watermelon, and it's aloe vera. This is really healthy, very good to drink. I buy them very, and they don't they don't cost that much. They cost like maybe a dollar something, a dollar I think a dollar forty nine. I don't know exactly where you guys live at, but it's really good. You should try it out. I always buy like six or seven of them. All right, so here we have. 
This is actually, um, you can draw Marvel characters by Dan Jurgens, And he is one of my favorite artists from Marvel Comics. So let's look at the book. And this is a brand new book. I had to get it again because the other book kind of ripped up the part, you know. So this one actually looks way, way better. <clears throat> it's a little bit used, of course, you know, like every used book. But it's in great condition. And here we have the segments for the head. But it's going to show you more, trust me. Here we have equipment to use, pencils, pens, and like I have, the eraser pen. And I usually use this eraser right here, the white one. And kneaded eraser is always important. And what's good about the kneaded eraser, like I told you guys, that you bend it, you could shape it, mold it like clay, and erase every type of detail there is. Okay, here we have basic shapes, and of course, everything has to do with shapes. My, the flashlight, a cell phone, a radio, a book, and notice that everything is three-dimensional. So you don't want to draw a book that's flat, okay? For example, let's do the... And let's, uh, let me see if we could... Uh, All right, maybe we'll do it here. Okay, yeah, we'll do it right here. Okay, say if we're gonna do the, the flashlight. You know, if sometimes you wanna, you know, if you're not practical and you don't know anything about three-dimensional, you'll end up doing something like this. That's flat, right? It's fine, I mean, you could do this, you know, just to practice to figure out if you're designing a, a flashlight for a company, well, you start out flat. Sometimes, you know, designers that do either toys or flashlights or radios, whatever, they do everything flat. It's kind of like when they're doing a building, they start out doing everything flat. When they're looking, it's like if you were looking from the ceiling down and that's floor planning. Well, the same thing when you're drawing objects, okay? so. Picture this as a three-dimensional uh, form of a flashlight. So let's finish it as a flashlight, all right? Let's try to finish it as a flashlight. Let's give it more detail. And over here in the top. So it'll look more like a flashlight. But the only problem with this is that it looks flat, right? So let's, let's look at this. So yeah, it's, it's almost the same thing except I didn't do the ring in right here, no, the top of the flashlight, the head of the flashlight. So it looks flat. So what do I have to do to make it look like this? What I'm gonna do is, I'm going to use cylinder shapes. So that's what they're, actually, that's what they're showing you right here. See, cylinders right here. So give it a nice, nice uh, effect. I'm gonna use this technique, which is, the cylinder and three-dimensional, okay? And then the bottom of the flashlight right here. And then right here, I start doing more cylinder shapes. Bring it out like that. And then another cylinder shape right there, see? And let's do the center which actually comes out a little bit out. So that's a flashlight right there. Okay. And then we'll do, we'll dark the area right here and right here. You know, give a cast shadow because you can tell, which I can't, I'm gonna show it to you as soon as I finish this, but you're going to see cast shadows on the flashlight, a lot of it. Okay. All right, so let's go with the real flashlight right here, see? Notice there's a lot of cast shadow right here, especially here, underneath here. It's really dark here. And when you're drawing stuff like this, 
got to make sure that there's some type of highlights. Okay. Uh, same with the basketball. You see the cast shadow on the um, on the basketball, and of course you need to draw a circle of here to do a basketball. And here's a computer. You can tell it's three dimensional, and it's a kind of like slanted a little bit, sort of like perspective in a way. So that's what this is, people. And if you look at how to draw the Marvel way, which let me let's um, look at this right here for a second. The Marvel way, you can see everything is done by cylinders. It doesn't look flat. Like for example, um, some people would draw the um, the lamp, <clears throat> and let's draw the lamp, and let's draw it flat first, and then we'll draw it, you know, three dimensional. All right. So let me see. We'll draw the lamp. We're, we're going to do it flat. And I used to do stuff like this when I was a kid. I never, I didn't know anything about the three-dimensional or cylinders or anything like that. So I would figure out, trust me, the shape and everything. Um, but I never knew how to do three-dimensional. Okay, so that would be more like a flat you know, drawing a flat lamp. Now, if you were to do this three-dimensional, you're going to, you know, of course, you're going to do the cylinder here first for the top of the lamp, like this, like this, right here. So it'll look like, you know, three-dimensional. You could do a center line also, do the center line. And then we'll do a cylinder shape right here. Okay. And this will be the bottom, a cylinder shape for the bottom of the lamp. Right there. And now if you look at this as shape, so you do the outline of the lamp. Like kind of like, oh, the camera's moving. Oh, so hold on. It's just, there's too much stuff here, so I'm going to have to move it like this. Because I just want you guys to look at the camera. I mean, you know, hopefully you guys can see this whole thing here. Unfortunately, I don't have a professional camera. They could actually do everything horizontally better. Okay, so here we have the shape of the lamp. And then we do a design, sort of like a cylinder shape. Even when you're doing the design on the lamp and it has sort of like a curve design, you know, you're, you're actually going to shape it also as a cylinder shape. And maybe you might want to do another design here. Again, it's like if you were drawing through the whole object. That's, but don't worry about that because you're going to erase that, you know, and, and make it more better and stuff. And I think I did that lamp in the bottom not too good. So I can always fix that. So that's what I'm going to do. Fix it. And then, of course, this is going to guide me, these, this cylinder over here. And then we'll just fix the bottom of the lamp. And then I could do this if I want, just to do the length of the lamp. And there, voila. You see, it looks more three-dimensional. And you can see the effect of the cylinder. If you want to do the bottom of the lamp, as you can see here. See, he did it right here. You can see the other side of the lamp. Because he's showing us that everything is all cylinder shapes. All right. And the same thing with the cup. You can see the cylinder shape right here. And then, of course, to make this cup, he did a straight line down. Well, every you know, in the beginning, you start out with a straight line. Uh, you do lines first. And then after that, you perfect it by doing a three-dimensional shapes and cylinder. And then another cylinder over here. Okay. Now, I don't know if I'm explaining this well, you know, just let me know because like I said, I'm not a professional, I'm a beginner, but from all the experience I've had, look at the pipe. The pipe has also a cylinder shape, even where the, where the smoke comes out right here, there's a cylinder shape right there. And now let's talk about block shapes. The book, you can actually see it's a block shape, sort of like a rectangle or square shape, but a three-dimensional square shape. Uh, same thing with the building over here. 
and the TV set over here. And it tells you right here, see? This is this over here. This is actually everything here, of course. So that's what they're talking about, shapes. Right here, they have the, the circle for the ball, circle for the, you know, the vase, I think. This is a vase. Um, so when you're doing a vase, all you have to do is, you know, do the shape of the vase using the circle technique and then erase the, the, uh, the top part of the circle. And then you have your vase, you could add flowers, whatever you guys want. You know, the same thing with the apple. The apple is sort of like a circle, but you're shaping it into an apple. That's why you need to learn about shapes and three-dimensional forms, whether it's triangles, rectangles, and everything. You see right here, three-dimensional. Then at the same time, you shade in the bottom of the box. You shade the sides of the box just to give it a nice three-dimensional look. All right, so let's skip all this and let's go back to Dan Jurgen's book. So here we have a cool ship now. I got to admit, that is really cool. But you can tell that when he did this, he did a lot of lines. And then he started shaping cylinder shapes at the same time. I would guess he did the outline and then he did, you know, just to get this whole effect over here. I think he did like a sort of like a cylinder shape and a cylinder shape over here. And then another cylinder shape. Okay, so that's what this is, people. Everything has to do observing and everything has to do with shapes. Okay, now here comes the best part. And I know a lot, a lot of you love figure drawing and stuff. So notice that this is a different type of technique. And the reason why that is is because it's not with the ball in the bottom, but you can actually visualize the shape in the bottom, okay? And uh, there's no torso here, but you can actually visualize because he's giving you an idea how the gesture skeleton figure works, okay? And all you, it's up to you guys to do the rest, whether you want to use block shapes or just scribble in the figure, whatever you guys want to do. You can see here's a different approach. He started a V shape, and mostly sometimes I do that, a V shape. Here's the, um, the shoulders. Here's the forearm right here. I don't know if you can see that because it's in pencil. And maybe if I turn this light a little bit, so maybe, yeah, because the light reflection kind of messes it up a little bit. All right, so you can see that everything is step by step. And it tells you step by step, start with a simple oval for the head, adding the light lines to show where the eyes are, nose will be. Continue the stick figure through the shoulders and the chest and get the basic pose. Add the arms with the um, circles representing the shoulders, elbows, and hands, okay? Draw down through the legs, meaning that you gotta keep going down. It tells you right here, this is this, okay? And then you start fleshing out the figure. So what he's doing is that he's working from shape to the bottom. He started from the top, as you can see here, this is one, and this is two, and then this is three, and this is four. So pretty much like I always do my construction books, that's the way he's doing it right here. Now, this is a great way, uh, which Marvel never did um, when they explained, um, you know, the how to draw the Marvel way. See, this is more better to understand because you're understanding that little by little that after you do that, you do the pelvic, and then you do the lines. And if you look at this, I don't know if you guys remember, I was uh, showing you how to draw like uh, Frank Springer. And S Frank Springer does something like this. So let's, let's um, analyze Frank Springer first. So if Frank Springer were to do something like this, okay, and let's analyze this real, you know, carefully. So Frank Springer would, you know, probably would do the chest area like this, you know, pretty much like that. And then something like this, and then something like this. He would uh, actually, uh, let me see, uh, yeah. He'll actually do like the sockets, like this. Even though you don't see it here, but that's what they're showing you in a way. So Frank Springer would do something like that. And then Frank Springer would do a line like this. And then he'll bring out the lines coming out like this from the center of the line. Except that Dan Jurgens didn't do it that way, which I'm going to show you right now the way Dan Jurgens he does his figure. 
So here's the shoulder right here. You know, the ball shape for the shoulder, just like how the book explains. And then here's the head. And then, of course, the neck is a little bit thicker for the superhero, which I think this is, um, yeah, uh, Cyclops. Okay, so now we're going to do it the way Dan Jurgen does it, Jan. And notice that he changes in every segment, so it's not going to look the same in every segment. Because over here, you can tell the stick figure is a little bit different here than this. So let's do it the way, uh, let's get this thing here for a second. Let's do it right here. So I'm going to do it bigger, so, well, slightly bigger, you know. All right, so that way you guys see pretty much all the details. And let me see if you guys could see this. But anyway, I'll show you little by little because, unfortunately, I got to show this uh, vertically. All right, this would be the chest. And it's sort of like a V shape. He started out like a V shape. And then he does the waist right here. And he does the waistline, sort of like a belt line right there, see? And then right here is where the buttocks is going to be. But don't worry about the shapes, because right now, he we're doing something uh, like sort of like a flat figure drawing. But we're going to add more, you know, more detail to this and more body to it. And then he did the lines coming from this part right here. And this would be the joint right here, the other joint here, and, and the bottom of the leg, and the other bottom of the leg. And we'll do fix this, and then we'll do right here the shoulders. And pretty much like the Frank Springer method, see? Like that. So all he has to do, I know mine doesn't look exactly like he did. Maybe if I add a little bit more outline here. Okay. something like that okay that's the way Dan Jurgen does and then then he starts fleshing it out like adding more outline to the whole body he'll do like an outline you know like that and then over here then over here so he sort of like sort of like connecting the body little by little you know that's what he's doing chest area right here so that's what this is right here okay guys all right so let's uh do another uh, let's see let's turn the page and analyze the rest of the book male figure here's a cool drawing of um thor daredevil captain america and spidey <clears throat> And what I like about this part right here that you can see the whole figure here drawn and then the skeletal part. Now tell me, is that cool or what? See? So most artists actually use this technique also. And I noticed that um, he works differently in every uh, segment that he does. This would be here the crotch area and this would be the leg. But remember, if you look at this, this is the... Um, the proportions one two three four five six seven eight nine heads tall okay so this is the skeleton part and if this is the proportions and the same thing that goes with the uh, profile right here he did it right here too so when he did this whole method I would guess and I think this is the way he did it to do this whole thing so let's um, analyze this a little bit here I think he did it this way. I think what he did, he would actually use um, guidelines for the proportions. This is right here for the shoulder. This is the, uh, let's study this. Good, all righty, all righty. Okay, this will be the, for the chest area right here. This is the, where the bottom of the, the rib cage here. This would be more like where the hip area is. And then right here would be the legs. This and that. So, um, 
he did the same thing over again, sort of like a V shape for the top of the shoulder. And then right here is sort of like a cylinder, like a ring. That's what it looks like, like a ring. And then right here would be the V shape for the crotch area. And then he did the legs. Something like that. Now, mine did not come out right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first do the V shape. Right? And then do the waist. And then do the bottom. Okay, that's more better. And then do the V shape for the crotch area. And then just measure. Like little by little, I'm going to start measuring the proportions. So yeah, because this did not come out right. So the way I did it just came out like a flop. This would be the arm and the head. And here's the leg. Another part of the leg will be here. There you go. Something like that. All right, so let's keep going with the next page. Let's analyze the rest of this stuff over here. Okay. And the same thing he did with the woman. He did the same thing with the woman. But notice that this, the V shape is different than the, the, the one that from before by Reed. So this is a little bit different here. So this one, you could actually do it like this if you want. You could actually draw her V shape to the top of her body, draw her waist right here, and then visualize and of course do the bottom where the crotch area is going to be at, and then expand it out a little bit, the V shape, because that would be the form of the leg. This would be her legs right here. And let me see, uh, hold on. because I want to make sure I got the proportions of the head right, because the shoulders of a woman, it's a little bit, you know, smaller, and then I have to remember that the waist is big, so no, I got it right, so right here would be the breast right here. And then we'll start working with the outline. See? Okay, so if you look at this, that's what this is right here. You can see the skeletal part, the V shape that is sort of like, like this kind of for the crotch area. Okay, it's a little bit different. Okay. All right, so here's the muscle parts, which is really cool. I like this. This is really awesome. And of course, this is more like a skinny or slender um, superhero type of guy. And then it tells you pretty much all the names, you know, the biceps, the deltroid, I, I think. Yeah, this is the deltroid. And um, right here is the triceps right here, which I always forget the name of this part. And yeah, these are all different names here. The Yeah, these names, forget it. You got to be like a doctor to remember all these names. Biceps is the only one I can remember. And the triceps. That's the only one I can remember. Biceps and triceps. And remember that when the arm is uh, folded, actually bending upward, the muscle contraction actually moves. And everything starts moving. The top 
uh, not so much the top, but usually the middle part of the arm actually moves. It actually bends and into a more bigger curve, especially when you're drawing, you know, arms bending and stuff. And here we have shading, cast shadows again. <clears throat> that is an awesome drawing right here. Very, very perspective and foreshortening at the same time. But this is actually explaining to you about, you know, the shading, the shading the figure. A rough Wolverine. Uh, look at the dark line around Wolverine. It tells you all the dark areas you have to look at. And here we have the unusual shapes. And here's the same technique uh, like we did before, except this is the thing. Now, remember that when you're drawing big guys, big bulky characters, of course, you're going to do everything bigger. The chest over, over here, the shoulder is going to be more bigger. And you're going to do the waist that holds the trunk and that holds everything, the, the chest. You're going to make it bigger, like you see here. And then from there on, you start making more bigger shapes, like you see here. Okay. Uh, then this is the finished drawing of the thing. I gotta admit, that came out pretty cool. So what I like about this book that not only it shows you the technique and the method, but it shows you pictures that you could actually enjoy. Like, this is a fantastic picture of Spider-Man fighting Wolf, uh, not, uh, Venom. These are two types of Venoms. So this is really awesome. This is the Nightcrawler right here. This is giving you, uh, you know, how action actually works. You know, the way it jumps up. Right here is different. And this is the action sketchbook right here. <clears throat> Here's This whole thing here is going all the way down this way, see? So I'm gonna have to move the book this way so you can see the other side. Notice it's going this way, the pose. And every pose that he's doing, he, he changes every pose. So that's very important to, especially when you're doing action scenes and stuff. Here's action details here, the twists and the turns. And of course, George Bridgman explains it very well how to do the twist when the body is twisting. See, of course, this is going to be a little bit different. This is not George Bridgman because you can tell this is different. So my greatest guess that he did the center line first. And he did the loop, which is the, um, the cylinder for the waist. And then he started working with the rest of the body, the outline, I think. I think that's the way he did it. You can see it's more like a burn, you know, like a C curve right here. See, it's like a C curve. It says it right here. <clears throat> Pretty cool stuff. And here we have a uh, dynamic uh, tension pose right here. And you can see, you see the curve right here. You can see the, the ring, which is for the waist. And after that, he starts forming, adding, you know, he fleshes it out. He adds the muscles, this and that, until this little by little, it actually turns into a real cool superhero. And uh, this is the actual, well, it's not the same thing, but it's a, a different picture of the daredevil. <clears throat> Now, the only problem with this, that he made a mistake here. This is the Daredevil, but he actually uh, wrote Panther. Now, that's a big mistake he did. So he did a, yeah, the Black Panther. But it's, if you look at it, it's um, the Dare, Daredevil. So that's the only, like a boo-boo he did for this book. Okay, so here we have perspective. And here we have a perspective scene with action. And you can see a sense of perspective of the character, this and that. So you could tell this is a different technique right here, you see? He did the um, the waist, the cylinder for the waist, and then he did a, another cylinder here for the leg. So there are times, and I've shown you guys this before, that sometimes, you know, you could do the gestures like this. Here's the waistline. And then you do cylinders for the pelvic area. And then you do the lines for the legs.
So you could do it this way also. Because I notice um, ever since I've looked at this book that the methods actually change. So that's what he does. Okay, so let's go on with the next page. And I think, let me get this book out of the way for a second. All right. I guess when I finish with this, I got to fix everything here. There's 20 papers and drawings here. I got to fix that. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to hear it from my brother. That's just big mess here in the kitchen table. All right, so we have body perspective right here. And this is another perspective. But this is actually a woman. A very nice pose. And actually this thing here that you see is this right here. Because it turns like this. You can see the back. Okay, here we have more gestures for shortening. Um, this is actually telling us uh, which looks better. Let's look at the Colossus in the first drawing. We see him from the side in the dynamic punching action. Number two, as we, as we, um, as we swing around him, we can uh, see his punch arm appears to be getting shorter. You see, because we're actually... So he's looking at this pose, but... Kind of like, uh, imagine yourself, you're going around this hose. Like, for example, if you're looking at a statue, and you know, sometimes you look at statues, there are different poses. And when you look at, go around the statue, you're going to see different angles. So that's what he's showing you right here, see, on the figure. And then um, here we have another pose right here. And notice that when he did the select going up, I noticed he did the outline of the hip area right here. So this is this is another thing you could do too. Like for let me see, because I've seen this done by several comic book artists. They do something like this, and I'll show you how this is done. Here's the loop, and then you can do a line coming out like yeah, a line this way for the leg, and then do a hint of the hip area. And then do the rest of the leg, like that. Let's try this one again. This. So it's not exactly the same pose. I'm just giving you an idea what he did here by using that same style that you could use the same technique except that you're gonna do the outline of the hip and just a little hint over here, that's it. And of course the women's body is gonna be smaller on the top, so let's not forget that. And then after that, notice that he does cylinder shapes and he does the outline. Now, this is made in pencil, so I don't know if you can see that. So that's the same thing we're gonna do. We're gonna do cylinder shapes. You could do the outline if you wanna end then do the, the cylinder shapes. Do the outline and then do the cylinder shapes, like that. See? Do it like that. And I've seen Robert Marzullo do stuff like this also because there was a, a video he did, which was really cool, that he did something like this. Like this, right? This is the hip area. And then he did a leg coming out this way. And then I noticed he did the outline. And then he did a cylinder shape. So, yeah. And I forgot what video that is, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to look at Robert Marzullo's uh, old videos on figure drawing. And I'm going to actually try to like, um, or maybe I could look back at my old books that I have because I have more drawing books. Um, you know, books that I've done before. Um, I just got to re remember what book it was. 
but I know I have it someplace, but I'll find it. Or maybe I think I probably threw it away. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think I threw it away. But I always go back and look at his videos and then study the way he did that. Because that's the way um, Robert Marzullo does. It's sort of like Dan Jurgens a little bit. Like that. Like that. that. And then he does the outline. Then he does the cylinder right there. Yeah, I'll find it again. I'm definitely going to find that again because I really like the way Robert Marzullo, do, he did those figures way, way back. Okay, so here we have another uh, segment of Spider-Man. And you can tell that this is this. See? This is the uh, gesture right here. This page here. And this is the finished drawing. The final pencil drawing. So gesture meaning the rough pencil drawing. That's what this is. All right, so let's uh, keep going. And here we have more stuff here. This is this right here. This is the rough drawing. And this is the, the final um, comic book drawing, which you can see more colors and more details, inking and all that. So this is, you know, like sort of like the planning gesture rough drawing right here. And you can see it right here also. This is the rough, the planning, and this is the finish right here. See? And you can tell that it, everything has to do with gesture forms. You see? You can see the lines here. So my greatest guess that, you know, it's pretty much like I've been showing you guys, you know, uh, doing the, the um, torso and the pelvic. And then after that, you add the lines for the limbs, the arms. And right here looks a little bit different here. And of course, this is the uh, rough for the head, which is this, you see? And you can see Captain America uh, fighting this guy here with the shield. And you see it more clear over here, see? All right, so um, here we have the heads now. Now, this is a little bit different. Um, this is sort of like if you were doing um, the same process like I've been showing you guys before. You use a center line first and then you round it off as an X shape. Well, it tells you everything right here. And then you draw in, you know, the lines. Draw three, pretty much like I've been telling you guys, horizontal line, whatever. Then you do the eyes underneath the horizontal line with the eyebrows. Then you add more details, uh, you know, the nose, the mouth, and then you shape the jaw and all that. Okay. So that's pretty much what I've been showing you guys, which I'm not going to do this. Um, it's going to take a little longer because I got to still show you some more books afterwards. So like I said, you can use a box shape. For example, it tells you that you can draw a circle or whatever, an oval in the box shape. You do a rectangle, of course, and you do the segments for the eyes. Or if you want, you do the rectangle, just do this over here and this here this here this this and then do an egg shape in the box and then you do the uh lines for and let's um this one i'm definitely going to do all right let's start with this one yeah this one i'm definitely going to do because i want to practice this one also like i said there are times that i'm going to probably do some you know some tutorial or some explanation or something so we're going to do a uh, rectangle shape. And that's, I got to make sure it's even on both sides. And of course, I got to also know that this is an oval is going to fit in here. So I'm going to simply, little by little, draw the shape of the oval. Okay, that's what I'm doing, the shape of the oval. And now I could actually uh, start doing, you know, these segments over here, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So if I look at this, if I turn it this way, uh, it's sort of like in the center of the box, kind of. Then again, I could also, you know, pretty much since I know a lot of um, proportions of the faces, 
I could visualize this that the eye line is going to be here, the nose line, all that. So sometimes you got to like turn around the book in order to figure out what you're doing. So, so that's what I'm going to do. The eye line should be around here. Then the nose line should be around here. Then the mouth line should be around here. Voila, it's correct. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, add the features. That's all I got to do. So, you know, remember that the uh, eyes are uh, three eyes length. So we do the eyes right there. And then we could work with the nose. The eyebrows. Let's not forget the eyebrows. And as while we're at it, we'll just shape the eyes. And right here would be the mouth. Okay, so after that, all I got to do is, if I want, I could actually visualize where those planes are. I can go in the bottom right here. And of course, you know, usually the chin is a little bit bigger. And then I go up, you see, like that. Just like the uh, Hogarth method. Except that we're using the box shape. And then I can, you know, close it right here. Just like the Hogarth method. You know. And then this right here that I did, of course, right here. Uh, first, let me shape um, the bottom part. Or actually, no, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. I got a better idea. Okay, I'm going to do this side right here, which is the hairline. And then taper in, yeah, the shape of the face. You see? And of course, the hair is kind of banging down a little bit. And of course, the hair is coming out of the box. The outline of the hair is coming out of the box. Right there. And then we have the ears. Okay, so it looks a little bit kind of like this. Not so much, maybe because I'm doing it too fast. I know if I take my time at it, it will come out better. Maybe if I sharpen. Yeah, let me sharpen this pencil a little bit. Let's see what time is it. It's, oh my God, it's 12 o'clock. I should get some rest. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's just finish this and see if, how we're going to. So I'm just going to do one side of the face. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can take some cold medicine because this this cold I have is just incredible. And then this sore throat is just terrible. And that's because of the change of the weather. So I'm going to fix this up a little better. No. That is Speed Racer out there trying to show off his car. Oh, I think that was probably a motorcycle. Yeah, that was more like a motorcycle, I think. I don't know if you guys heard it, but it was a motorcycle. So I'm going to do half of the face. So that way um, you guys uh, understand this. So you can see the difference from the technique. And from the, you know, the finished drawing. And then right here, so I, I did this over here. So I'm going to start working with this shape right here, the cheek line. That goes straight down like this. So this is a different form of comic book face that Dan Jurgens uh, did, of course. some more rhythm on the hair over here because I can tell that when he draws the hair he doesn't exaggerate it too much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this 
because I want you guys to see the shape. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do it on a side here, step by step, so you guys know. So I'm going to do it smaller, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. You do it like this, the square shape, right? And then let's do another uh, square shape again. So we'll do a step-by-step -step process here. And then we'll do the oval. You know, sort of like an egg shape right there. Then let's do again another a rectangle shape. So you guys can see this. And then we do the oval again, the egg shape, and now we can do the segments for the eyes, okay? And the nose and the mouth, okay? So I'm gonna put uh, one, two, three, and I will post this so you guys can see the results. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add the eyes and then use a little bit of the George Bridgman, remember, you have to use a little bit of everybody, George Bridgman, whatever, and then you'll come out with something like this, you see? So I'm going to write it here after, you know, in order one, draw the eyes, nose, and mouth. Second, use the planes and when i'm talking about the planes is the george bridgman or the hogarth method okay three flesh out the head so i don't know if you guys will be able to see this so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to make it sharp when i actually post because I, I could go to um, uh, phone editing and actually do this a little bit more sharper. But sometimes pencil, there's a problem with pencil sometimes that you gotta like really tighten in the pencil like this, you see? So yeah, maybe I might tighten in the pencil. Um, and then just like that. Okay, good. And then I know that the eyes are going to be here and right here, this eye. So notice I did this. I erased that hair so that way you guys can see the oval and you can see the segments and you can see the planes, sort of like a diamond shape, like that, okay? From this to this. See the difference? That way you guys won't get lost. All right, so... Let's uh, go with this page right here. This is the um, the profile, and of course, it's the same process. You do the box shape, except that there's no line in the center. You're just gonna do a plain rectangle box shape, and then you do an, a circle, and then you do sort of like a jaw shape, and you're gonna shape it as a head, you see? So it's, it's just very easy to de um, detect these things little by little. And then you do the, uh, of course, in the lines, after that, yeah, you do the lines here, and then after that, you start doing the eyes, the nose, and of course, this is not a perfect nose, if you notice. Um, it's more like a comic book, exaggerated nose, but you know what? Let's try this one out, for just to see if we can figure this one out. Let's put this book right here, and let's use the board, otherwise, it's going to get wrinkled in the bottom, so... We're going to do the same thing, the same process, sort of like a square shape. That's what we're going to do. <clears throat> and then we'll do a circle for the, the cranium, the top of the head. And then slowly we're visualizing it. Train your eye to see the shape of the head. Now, I don't know if I did that good, but anyway, it just... Let me uh, hold on a second. So I'm, I'm so used to using the Loomis method. 
Um, but it's always good to try something new, something um, different, you know. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, here's the eye line here, the nose, and then the mouth should be around here. So I don't know if that's correct, but that's what this is. And then, of course, you uh, start working with the framing of the face. So my nose is going to be a little bit different. It's going to come out further out a little bit. And do the mouth. And then the chin. Yeah, this method takes a lot. So you know what? Let's skip that. So I'm still going to post this so you can see the difference with this. So I'd rather just do it like this. Like For example, I'm not going to use the box shape. I would just do the circle for the craning of the head, right? And then slowly visualize the other half of the bottom of the face like that. Okay. And I know I have other books here that actually would show you this technique. So now I could actually, you know, just do the box shape, at, you know, or I don't even have to use the, the box shape. I could just do simply do, I visualize the eye here, visualize the nose here, and then the mouth here. Okay, so I think this is more correct and more better. And then I'm going to uh, visualize the eye would be around here, right? And then I'm going to start working with the shape. Bring it in here because of the eye socket, of course. And then do the nose right here. And then right here is the mouth. Just make sure the proportions are right. And yeah, this is much better. You see the proportions are actually exact. Just a slightly off a little bit. But I can always fix that, of course. I could also, when I do the head, when I do the circle, I could do like this if I want. Like, for example, let's do it up here. We could do it like this. We do the circle, and then we work with the bottom of the face, which is going to be the jaw part. We could do it like this, and then visualize. Kind of like the, like we uh, reviewed yesterday, the... Um, uh, G. Lames, or oh, I keep forgetting his name. Oh my God, Lee Ames book. Yeah, something like that. So the jaw would be here, see? And then the eye would be here, and then the nose would be here, and the mouth would be here. And it's very simple. All you got to do is just visual effect. You visualize the eye here, and then you visualize the contour of the face, and then the nose, and then the mouth, this and that. And if it seems pretty small, all you got to do in your phone is bring the picture higher, more focus, more closer, because I've done it before on YouTube. All right, so I've already explained how we do lips. This is another way uh, how to do lips by Dan Jurgens. And here's the nose right here. And uh, here's the eyeball method right here. Uh, so let's go on to the next page. And here we have the woman. And it's the same thing. You know, you start drawing the box shape. Lightly sketch the shape of the head and the jaw. La, 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 but it doesn't tell you the box shape. Let me see. Oh, okay. Well, here it is. Classic female head. Once again, we start with a grid to maintain the proportions. Draw a rectangle. Halving it with a vertical line and add a horizontal line halfway up to the mark of the center of the eyes. You should be an expert at this, it tells you. Okay, one, lightly sketch the, the shape of the head, which, yeah, you draw the head inside the box shape. You see, with the rectangle, with the front view is more easy to do, but when it comes to the, um, the profile, it's a little bit harder to do, okay? So keep that in mind. It's not going to be the same thing. But with a little practice, you will get it, you know. But the front, to me, the front view is more easier using the box shape. All right, so, okay, the narrow chin. Then you drew the, the male head. Okay, add the larger eyes, longer. Uh, why did they say the male head? There's something not right here. Hold on, but this is a woman. 
lightly sketch the shape of the head. The jaw line should should taper, of course. Yeah, the, usually I always show you that that when you're drawing the jaw, it has to be tapered in. All right, to a narrow, yeah, narrower a chin than you drew for the male head. Oh, okay, they're talking about when we drew the male, you know, the man before. Okay, now I got it. Okay, so here we have another profile, and uh, it's the same thing, you know, the yeah, it doesn't tell you pretty much. Yeah, start with a rectangle, adding a horizontal lines for the eyes and nose and mouth, rough in the head shape. Okay, this one is a little different. You start off with the uh, rectangle, and then after that, you add the lines for the features, then you, you know, add in. And I think that's what I did wrong in the other drawing. So let's, let's uh, give it another shot. Let's just try this out again, because I like to tackle it. I just have to tackle it, so... So let's let's do this one. So yeah, you uh, start with the uh, yeah rectangle, and we'll do it bigger. Rectangle, right here. Okay, and then we add the lines for the features, right? Kind of like if you were seeing the face. I think I know what he's doing. The nose would be here, and the mouth would be around here. Okay, so I think this is the way he did it. Um, you could use the uh, egg shape, but yeah, let's do it pretty much like um, uh, Lee Ames does it, the way he does his head. Okay, yeah, like this. I, that, I think that would be better. So now I'm going to visualize uh, the, uh, let's look at the eye very carefully. All right. Do the eye first. And of course, the eye is a little bit below, oh, excuse me, below the, uh, uh, the, the eye line right here. And then now we could work with the framing of the face like this. And then the nose and the corner of the nose. And I'm usually going to use that slanted line if I have to. But if I can do the lips pretty much how I always do it, then I'll do it. Let's see. Let's see how it works. And this will be the chin right here. And then of course, the jaw is going to go up. And then, of course, we're going to visualize the ear. We could actually see the ear line if we want. Right there, that's the ear right there, see? And of course, the back of the neck. And then, let's go with this drawing right here. You can tell the neck. I don't know, not the neck, I would say the jaw. It's not done correctly. I don't know why, there's something very funny with this jaw. But anyway, we could do it better. Um, we could do that jaw better. So we're just gonna do the jaw. Right there. And then we could do the eyebrows. Okay. And now we could add hair. Okay, so I think this actually works out. Remember, you start with a rectangle shape, you add the lines for the features, whatever, and then you start working with the shape of the head, whether you want to use an egg shape like this. Or you can do pretty much what he does. He does a circle, you know, and then he does the rest of the shape like this. If you guys want to do it that way or this way, whatever. Okay, so let's skip this. We already did. We already know how to do noses. Um, here's a dramatic light. It's all about, you know, shading, cast shadow lights, uh, dark shadows, rough out the general. It tells you right here with the, with the head. Gives you an idea how to do this is really cool because it gives you step-by-step -step, uh vision of a step-by-step -step, um i think this guy is the yeah the green the green goblin yeah and then he does the the shading and the cast shadow here's some cast shadow right here and then we can see it on the face right here a lot of cast shadow from the top and then a little bit in the center of the face here so this is like an under the head and this is a to the side of the head. And this is above the head. 
and I'm talking about the light and the shadow, okay? All right, let's keep um, going on here to see the hands. Okay, the hands. And again, this is a little bit different, of course. This is, you know, using sort of like a block shape. It tells you draw a horizontal line halfway down the side of the rectangle to indicate the wrist. And uh, the rectangle is the palm of the hand. Okay, um, that's what this is. So uh, finish the, the drawing with the uh, details and the shadow. But it tells you, okay, I read this wrong. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm supposed to go here. This from here is number two right here. Draw the, the center line for each finger, okay, and the thumb to show their position. Okay, number three, flesh out the fingers out with the cylinder shapes. Use the circles to give the effect of the palm, okay. The problem is that I got confused with this right here. Um, it's supposed to be in order, okay? One, uh, two, three, four, okay? And then this is the, the final result. And I gotta admit, that's a real cool hand he did. Awesome hand. Then it tells you right here how to do a fist, how to do a fist going up and, a, and you know, sideways, three quarter view fist. And that's hard to do, a three quarter view fist is not easy to do. See, I could do something like this, then again, I still got to worry about the inside right here. That is very, very difficult sometimes. This I can do really easy because I, I like doing fists. So that I can show you. So, so we use a, you know, like a regular box shape and we visualize a box shape like that. And then right here would be the bottom of the thumb right here, right here. And then we add um, lines. We'll do a line here, another line here. And this will be the other part of the finger here. So always remember that when you're drawing hands, I don't know what it is that sometimes you see more of this finger right here than the rest of the fingers because it's actually kind of like foreshortening, especially when you're doing a fist. Like, see, if I go like this, you can see my finger a little bit more forward, this finger right here. And then these are a little bit inward. So that's what they're showing right here. So. In order to get that effect, I usually use like an oval effect like this, you see? An oval effect, and then I'll just do simply the rest of the fingers uh, and right here. And I have to remember that little webbing here. And of course, right here underneath here is going to be darker because of the cast shadow of the finger. So always keep that in mind, people. And this is the other part of the finger right here. And then remember that when you're doing the knuckles, uh, this knuckle, if you look at the knuckles, it's a little bit different. And look at my knuckles, and I can't really move my, but if you look at it, this one is shorter than this one. The middle finger knuckle is more higher, and this one is a bit lower. So what do we do? We first, I wanna work with the top right here first, which is the, um, the middle finger. And then right here, I'm gonna do the other one a little bit lower. And then this one a little bit lower. And this one also a little higher than these guys right here. So this will be a little bit higher right there. And that would be my fist. And then, of course, since these fingers are in the front, this part of the finger, you're going to see more highlights, on, especially on the top of the thumb here. But always remember the bottom of the thumb here is going to be darker. And then the back of the thumb you know, which is this part right here is going to be darker. And yeah, we'll do some more cast shadow there. And then maybe we'll just do more lines like this just to give it a better effect. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so you see what I did here? See the difference? It's a little bit the same. I still need some fixing over here. So let me um, fix this side over here. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fix this right here. Just to make it a little bit better. So if I want, I could do a curve also, you see? This whole part right here, you can see is sort of like a curve. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a curve just to make this a little bit better a curve, make this higher, make this a little bit higher, and this one kneeling a little bit down, 
and this one is already right. So it looks better now, you see? Kind of a little bit the same, a little bit, you see? There you go. Okay, now I'm not gonna do this. This is gonna take a lot to do because I really need a lot of practice with hands. So, but you have the idea. And if I'm gonna rate this book, I would give it a 10 because it's a very good book. Actually, I would give it, I would actually give it a 15 better. A 15 rating because it, it's got a lot to offer. It's better than the Marvel way. How to draw the Marvel way is a failure. Okay, here we have the feet. How to draw the feet. So it tells you right here, start with a simple line making the center of the leg, which is this right here. Uh, attach to the rounded off rect uh, yeah, rectangle for the foot, which is this right here. This is sort of like a rectangle. Even though this rectangle is sort of like a, um, I would say, kind of like a very curvy in a way. Then second, flesh out the lower leg, which is over here. Okay. And the heel, which is this right here. See, this is the heel right here. And then, the, then okay. Well, indicating the five toes, remember they are much shorter than fingers. Okay. Remember, when you're drawing the toes, they're not long like fingers. I never seen feet with long toes. So always keep in mind, they should look like this, okay? Shorter. Now, I got to admit, this is a little bit kind of exaggerated a little bit. But I think, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But right here is the, um, the segment right here, <clears throat> meaning that this is the, um, the rough. This is the rough, the beginning rough, the second beginning rough, and the finished third rough right here of the foot. So let's see if we can do this. It's always good to try something. Let's see. Let's uh, see. Okay. Sort of like a rectangle, but like a curved rectangle, right? Let me see if you guys can see this. Yep. I got to look back at my camera to see this. All right. Um... Now we do the bottom of the foot. I'm going to try to capture that. And then, like it's, it tells you, do the heel, which is this part right here. And this part right here. The outline of the top right here, see? And then little by little, you're going to end up doing either a shoe or a foot. And then, of course, this would be we're going to do the toes, but very carefully, we're going to actually do another line here for the toes. And then we just do outlines for the toes like that. So this needs a lot of practice, people. This is not easy. You know, drawing feet is not easy. So let's look at the rest of the feet here. Uh, this is more like a flat foot surface right here going straight up. Excuse me. Oh, I got the hiccups. Oh, maybe because I'm talking too much, I guess. I don't know. I got hiccups now. Can you believe that? Okay, closing. And then we got clothes right here. And remember, like all the other books, uh, they show you that when you're drawing closing, you got to know how to draw, you know, dress to impress the creases, you know, the creases and the wrinkles of the clothes. And also remember that, that technique that I've um, shown you before. It's called the zigzags to do the drapes and to do the, you know, the details of the clothes. Okay, especially when the the, uh, the body is moving, you definitely got to do a lot of movement. Uh, here's a nice uh, drawing of two ladies with different types of clothes. You know, these are jeans, skirts, whatever. Okay, so here we have capes, how to draw capes. This is another way how to draw the figure also. Um, <clears throat> but we're not going to do this one because I think I've shown you something like this before. Um, so it tells you pretty much how you do the, the cape. You do the form of the cape, and then after that, always remember that when the figure is in the front, the back of the cape is going to be darker. You're going to see a lot of dark shadows and dark, uh, you know, cast shadows behind the body and right, uh, you know, where the cape is because of the body's covering it. So you're going to see a lot of shadow. You're going to see some shadow like in some parts of the cape, okay? That, that actually goes for like the clothes, all right? Okay, so we have the villain character over here. Notice that he's got 
Uh, let me see. This is something different. The good and the bad and the ugly. I don't know why they say that, but anyway, let me see. Let me read this here. Uh, okay, they're talking about costumes. And I know sooner or later I will do um, a character design for you guys. Um, but what, what I'm going to focus now is, you know, head construction and figure construction. And there's a lot to show on that subject. So little by little, I will do all this stuff. Character design, which is really, you know, important. And then at the same time, we're going to add more details also when we do these character designs. Uh, okay, so we have monsters. Um, this is like the Hulk. Um, uh, Dr. Banner. Little by little, turning into the Hulk. The transformation. And here's another gesture right here, which is really cool. And you see how the gesture is done with a little, sort of like a cylinder shape for the waist. And then you got the stick figures coming out like this. This part right here is going to be with the crotch area right here. So in a way, what he's showing you is something like this. And even though this is something, uh, let me see. Okay, it says here, like all of our figure work, we will start with the basic stick figure to get the general pose. His head sits directly on his shoulders. Fill out the arms and legs, add the tail and the lizard-like head. At this stage, begin to sketch the claws. Complete your drawing with the gruesome look and plenty of scales. Add in the lizard's sinister forked tongue and you're done so what we're going to do is we're going to actually concentrate on the figure drawing so this is what he did here okay so that way you guys can practice this um this will be the upper part of the body and then he did the waist a uh, cylinder for the waist and then right here is the, where the crotch area is and I've shown you by, I think it was like from Google, it was something from Manga. It's very similar to this, which I'm going to show you right now. Um, that's what he did right here, see? So if you look at this and you look at this, so what do we do? We do sort of like an underwear, see? Sort of like an underwear all the way down here. And then after that, we do outlines of the leg outlines of the leg here and say that yeah these are pants like that and then we could finish off the rest of the closing here and and this will be the head so that's what he does and uh, the one from manga the from google is something like this this will be the waist this will be the top of the body which is the uh, shoulders the waist right here and then he does lines like this right like that and then after that um he starts doing the shape right here right here and then he does sort of like an underwear like that and then he does the legs like that so that's what this is right here Okay, so let's go a little faster with this book because I got to show you more books. Uh, exciting extras right here. These are how to draw weapons and guns. Weapons are very important when it comes to comic books. And this is a cool spaceship right here. And you can see this is all like cylinder shapes and block shapes. Start with the basic shapes using circles, triangles, and rectangles to construct a ship. You see? Then it says here, with the, constru uh, the, the, with the structure laid down, you can start sketching in the details. And of course, this takes a lot of work. To get something like this, it takes a lot of work. All right, so let me see. Um, okay. This is uh, character history. And here we have another rough right here. And this is the finish drawing right here. In pencil, though. Um then it tells you uh let me see here's the inking the finished inking that is so cool and we got more drawings so that's why i like this book because it shows not only the technique but it shows you more stuff like 
draw more, you know, artwork, inking work, everything, man. I mean, this book is really good. And here we have inking and coloring. Okay. And here we have the pens to use, the pens, quill pens, you know, brush pens, markers, whatever. Here's a brush, sable brush, inking. And inking effects right here, really cool, really cool stuff here. Uh, feathering is very important when it comes to comics. So let me see, uh, inking styles. And this is really cool. What I like about this, it tells you step by step how to do all this. Look at that. Ain't that cool? What? And then it gives you different options. You see, lighting inking, medium inking, and heavy inking. So yeah, this is this book really is worth it. And you can find this on eBay or on Amazon. Here we got markers right here to use and acrylic paints. That's him, Dan Jurgens. I think that's him, or I think that's the colorist. I'm not really sure, but Dan Jurgens looks different. Let me see, that's Dan Jurgens right there, see? That's the author. And now that we actually look at the picture, see, about the author. Dan Jurgens is a re renowned comic book penciler and writer. He has worked on many Marvel comics and characters, including Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, Captain America, and Thor, both as a penciler and writer. He is a graduate of the Minneapolis College of Art and Design, currently resides in uh, Minnesota with his wife and Anne and children, Theth and Qu Quinn. I guess those are his, his, um, yeah, his children, his kids. So let's go back here again. So that must be the colorist. That's a different guy there. Here we have the color basics, and that's very important when you're doing the color basics, trying to figure out what colors to use, which that I definitely need a lot of practice with that. Uh, color moods. Uh, let me see what else we got. Oh, God, let me see. Uh, comic color. And then we got more stuff over here. This is a different artist. Uh, the artist Brandon Peterson did a pencil layout to send to a book designer. Okay, this is a different artist. Okay, uh, we got another rough drawing. Yeah, rough drawing right here. Sort of like a gesture. Uh, let me see. And this is the finished penciling right here. And the inking process, final ink drawing. And that's Wolverine. Okay, so we got Spidey, Spider-Man, creating a comic. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little faster because I still got to show you two more books, uh, shots and angles. And then we got the script, when you read a script to do a comic strip. Thumbnails, a final layout, how to do the final layout. Let me see what else we got here. Okay, the end, that's it. All right, guys, get this book. It's really worth it. It's by DK. You control Marvel characters by Dan Jurgens. Okay, all right, so let's go on with the next book. We already did How to Draw the Marvel Way. And now we're going to go with this book here. Uh, and then maybe if we have time, we'll do this book. All right, first we'll start with Spidey. Spider-Man. All right, um, I don't know who's the artist on this uh, book, but it's done by Walter Foster. And Walter Foster, he's got several books from Marvel, which they're pretty good, and they also work for Marvel Comics. So remember, anything with Walter Foster is a good book. That's why I bought this book. All right, so um, very simple stuff. Pretty much like every other book. Um, it tells you pretty much how Spider-Man is, the story of Spider-Man, the Green Goblin, all the pencils and inking that you need, the colors that you need. And again, drawing basics, the circles and cylinders and shapes, all that stuff. And here we have the gesture. You know, you start off with a gesture, and this kind of reminds me how um, Brian Benjamin actually draws his 
gestures step-by-step uh, -step drawing method uh, let me see this is the basic anatomy tells you pretty much how the body works all the parts of the body of course let me see and then we got the backside and here's the legs and there's Spidey himself profile and I used to draw Spider-Man sometimes and I always made an error that I would probably draw Spider-Man like uh, probably like this sometimes um, that's when I started out and then I did here's his eye right here I mean some artists do it that way but the correct way is that when you're doing the anatomy of the head and remember Spider-Man is a human being so you got to draw him the same as a human being so pretend that you're seeing the nose pretend that you're seeing the mouth and pretend that you're seeing the chin but since he's wearing the mask so it's going to go looking like this you see all the way down like this that would be the spider-man head because the head has form and that's something that has to be always important you have to remind yourself that if you're drawing a character with a mask or something you've got to give it a shape as a human head all right so um the same thing with the front view you got to do the you know the shape of a front view so we have inking techniques here which is really cool step by step uh, coloring techniques and here we have the spider head the spider-man head and then we got step by step process how to do spider spider-man and here's the gesture the skeletal form and the outline of the figure that's pretty cool the penciling came out really good on that and here's another gesture and this like i said it's sort of like uh um, ryan benjamin does uh, he does something like this now notice that uh some comic book artists use the circle like marvel you know but this guy he did something similar to that but he did the shape of the pelvic at the same time meaning that you can do it like this let me give you an idea how he does this so here's the head here's the torso joints for the shoulders here's the torso right here so instead of doing the circle right you could you know you could actually do this a yeah as a circle after that you're going to do the waistline right and then after that you're just going to erase the top of the circle you know after that right here um the way i would do this i would just do the joint first because right here shows you the joint right here and the joint down here so i rather just do uh the joint first then the leg going down this way and then of course i let me erase this right here the, this foot so that way it won't throw me off that way you understand what i'm doing here Okay, so the leg, this is the the, uh, the pelvic shape. So instead of doing the line, I'm going to visualize where that joint is. So my, my process is going to be a little bit different. Then the leg is going to go back like this right here. Then I could do the leg. Then I could finish this leg also. The main thing is pretty much that's how... Um, uh, Ryan Benjamin does his figures that he does the joints first then he follows the line back to the basic part of the body okay so that's how what this is after that just like Ryan does he uh, does the outline like this you see he the same thing that he does and I'm gonna see if I can download that video so I'm gonna share it in my group once the uh, block is over and you're going to enjoy that video because it's pretty much comic book stuff, you know, uh, the theory of comic books, uh, you know, at the same time, figure drawing and all that stuff, all that stuff that you guys love, you see.
Okay, so here's the outline of the figure right here. And we got more right here. And this is the correct way how to do the spider logo. This is not the way how to do it. This is the correct way right here. And here we have the, again, Spider-Man. That's the same um, gesture form. It's just they're showing you how to do more details on it. And here, like you see, if you notice, this is sort of like a pelvic, but like an underwear shape. So he does the limbs, the arms. After that, he starts doing the outline, like you see over here. What is this? A fly got in here. Hmm. All right. I don't know how it got in there, but that's, that's something that I have to worry about. Now I got to check all my books. All right. So notice that this pose is kind of hard to do. So in order to get this type of pose, he had to do the foot first, sort of like foreshortened, you see? And then he worked more further back to do the, the whole shape of the leg. So let's keep going. That's when he starts doing more details. And let's just keep skipping and skipping and skipping because it's a lot, it's a lot. Step five, step six, step seven, see? And here's step eight. And here we go again, a gesture. And then here's the outline. And then he rounds it off. And then he adds more details until he gets the correct, um, I would say the design of the costume. And drawing the Spider-Man costume is not easy. And then we got another pose. So basically, I'm going to go a little faster so you can see. You can see here's the underwear shape right here. See? And after that, he adds more outline. Notice the, um, the foreshortening, the way he did the foreshortening. Again, remember, you don't want to do the stick lines first. What you're going to do is visualize and train your eye to see the foreshortening. <coughs> what you're going to do is the shoulder or you might want to start off with the hand first and then you go back with this joint and then you do this joint here for the shoulder then little by little you add the lines and you connect it the outline for the whole arm this one this arm is going back so in a way you're doing something like this so let me give you an idea how this is done say this is the I, let's use another page hold on And what's good about this that we can actually see it. Okay. All right. This is the head. Right. And this is the shoulder right here. And then what he does is, instead of doing this, the way I would do it, I would start with the shoulders first. There's the torso. And if I want to do a good foreshortening, uh, I would do the hand here. And then another joint here, and then work my way back like this. See? And of course, do the fingers. And this finger coming out. See? That's the way I would probably do foreshortening. All right, let's keep turning the page. Here's the finished process, step three, step four. Uh, let me see, uh, step five, step six, step seven, step eight, step one. Oh, okay, this is the green goblin. This is something else. But you can see it's the, it's the same process, but different poses. This is Dr. Octopus. You can see the Dr. Octopus is that sort of like a heavy type of guy. So what you're going to do is you do the shape of the, the top of the body and 
then you do the pelvic shape right here see then you do the legs after that you start working with the outline like you see over here and then you do the how you call those things the um the mechanical arms which you got to do it in sort of like curves it tells you right here don't do it like this mm -mm. do it like this you see in curves and then little by little you know you shape them up you give them character design and then voila you have dr octopus awesome I love stuff like this. This is really incredible. And there's another book which I really enjoyed a lot, but it's a shame because I lost it. It's also by Walter Foster, How to Draw a Spider-Man. But the techniques are a little bit different, which I'm going to show you after I... And then we'll end it. Then I'll do the other book because I think uh, my battery is going down. Okay, here is uh, Lizard Man. And that's the thing about these phones that the batteries don't last too long. Look at this. This is really cool. You see? Sort of like a pelvic shape. Now, this is this is something that uh, Robert Marzullo would probably do. The shape of the body. And then after that, the, uh, the pelvic. Then after that, he starts adding, you know, the outline. So let me give you an idea how he did this. Um, let's just bring it up here. So what he did was, um, here's the head, and this is the body, right here. And then he did the shape of the pelvic right here, like that. And here's the joint, brings it back. Here's the joint, brings it back. Then he does this leg here, the bottom of the leg. And of course, this is sort of like big feet right here the leg goes back and this would be the waist right here shoulders and another shoulder right here and this would be the top right here and right here would be another joint for the forearm right here so I'm tracing this so that way you guys can understand. And I'm going to do this in ink so you can see a little bit more clear. So what pen should I use for this? Let me see. I will use this one. You would need that. I'm not going to bottle with the hand now. Here's the pelvic. The joint. Then I bring the line back. Then this joint. And the hand right here. And of course, the joint first. And then I bring the line back like that. Now I could do the lines for the arm there. What I'm focusing more is the joints because once I do the joints, it gives me a better view of how the foreshortening is definitely going to look. And then I could do the lines for, you know, for the arms and the legs. So I think that's a better way how to describe this. Okay, so now let's look at this. You see the outline here? It sort of like comes out because this is a big, you know, guy with big legs. So the leg, excuse me, the leg is going to come out a little further out. So I would do something like this. Like that. <clears throat> that and then for the arms of course it's big arms and then we do the uh the forearm right here right there and of course 
course, this is the lizard guy. I think it's the lizard guy. Yeah, the lizard guy. And then he's got the tail coming around like this. Like that. So I didn't do the tail flat. I made it look foreshortened. Like, yeah, it's coming from the back, but at the same time, it's coming to the front. And you can see it more bigger when it comes to the front. Not perfect, perfect, but actually, you know what? Let's get rid of the tail. Because what I want to do is, is um, focus more on the body. That's what I want to focus more on the body. Let's, let's fix this a little better. <clears throat> darker all right all right okay so you have an idea how this is done now that this is the you know finished process he adds costume design which is step four step five he has detail. Step six, he's almost finished. Step seven, he has more details and more dark areas and cast shadows right here. And then after that, this is the finished drawing in color. And you can tell this is actually done in Photoshop, the colors and all that. Okay, here we have the head. Step one, step two, step three. And this is um, Venom, step four, step five. And this is Venom, another one, which is sort of like jumping right in front of us. And you can see this is sort of like a pelvic underwear technique. And this is the outline of the figure right here. And here's another one, here's another one, almost finished. Step three, step four, step five, step six, step seven. That's awesome right there. This is awesome. And here we have the head of the vulture. So I'm going to go a little faster because there's a lot of stuff here to see here. Uh, here's another one, uh, the vulture. So what this book is showing you is not only the figure, they're showing you the head and then the figure at the same time. That way you get an idea how to draw the head of the character and the figure at the same time. So let's go a little faster. Here we have the rhino. And notice that the legs are really exaggerated because a big guy, you know, he's got the pelvic over here, but he added more and more mass right here. You can tell. Sort of like Dan Jurgens that did the thing. Like that, you see? Pretty cool stuff. Look at that. And then little by little, he finishes the process. Step five, step six. Uh, step seven and step eight. Okay, that's it for this book. All right, so let's see if we can do this book. And then the last book, I'm going to leave it for another video. So this is uh, Drawing the Adventures. So again, I'm going to go a little faster. You already know pretty much how to do the gesture, so I don't have to show you again. So the same thing. Here's Iron Man. Here's the, uh, the anatomy. And this is the ink color techniques. And uh, here's um, the story of Iron Man, the biography. The story of Iron, here's the process of Iron Man. How to draw the Iron Man. Oh, that shit is gonna fall down, hold on a second. Yeah, I gotta fix this whole area right here. It's like. Okay, that's fixed. That's done. All right, so let's continue with this book here. So, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go a little faster. All right, 
Iron Man. Captain America. Captain America. The Falcon. The Black Widow. And what's really cool about it, they tell you what she's all about, what powers that she has. I guess on every character. So this book is a little bit different from the first book that I showed you. You can see the gesture right here. And the form of the body. Step by step. Yeah, so this book is made a little bit different. Um, I guess it's by a different artist. And it won't tell you. It's by Walter Foster, but they won't tell you the, the, the name of the artist. Maybe I gotta keep looking. It's probably around someplace. And this this would this would be something like how Robert Marzullo would do his uh, gestures. Okay, there goes the big dog now. Yeah, whenever that little dog starts yapping, the the big dog starts. Hawkeye, I think this. Yeah, this is Hawkeye. The Hulk. Notice, here's, if you look at this, here's the uh, pelvic shape right here, you see? And then when he does the pelvic shape, he does a little bit more mass covering too, because it's a bulky character, so you gotta add more outline. And that, from there on, you start making the Hulk. Working with the Hulk. Add more details. And then you'll have your Hulk right there. And it's got more details here. Seven, eight is the finished drawing right here. And here, Thor. How to draw Thor. We got, again, this is sort of like Robert Marzullo would probably do. Thor. And this is the more details. And here's the finished drawing. And this is Ant-Man. This is a different pose. So what I like about this book that each character has its own pose. So I would rate these books probably a 10. Yes, a 10 because it's good. It's worth it. And you guys should actually look out for this. You can find this probably on eBay also. And I got this, believe it or not, it's in great condition. I got this in Barnes & Nobles with the uh, membership card. Um, I got it pretty, uh, well, I wouldn't say cheap, but like 50% off. <clears throat> so each book must have cost, let me see the price. Uh, it was like 19.95 but i got it for probably 18 something or 17 something because i'm not very good with the percentage here is uh, the vast uh okay yeah the wasp the wasp character i was gonna call it the vasp but no but it's the wasp oh my favorite black panther really cool look at that and it gives you the biography what he's all about, name, height, and weight. Well, you know, every character in this book has the same thing. So if you guys get this book, you're going to have a lot of fun. And this is the finished process right here. Let's skip a little few pages here because my phone is going down. He is the, this is the Vision, character called Vision. I'm not too familiar with him, but maybe you guys are. And here we have the gesture again. And let's skip a couple of pages because there's a lot of stuff here. Here's the finished process right here, the penciling and the inking. And Nick Fury, look at that. That's pretty cool. His biography, whatever, his height, weight, and everything. Here's the gesture. So let's skip a couple of picture, um, yeah, pages. 
and we'll just show the penciling and the inking part, the finished drawing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to skip a couple of pages because it's just all about process, step by step. This one is uh, Captain Marvel, a woman, and uh, this is the uh, step by step process. And let's skip a couple of pages. Here's the penciling, and this is the finished drawing. See, this is Hella. Um, and let's skip a couple of stuff here. And also you could do stuff like this. You can, and I've shown you guys this before, that you do the um, sort of like a block shape and you do a V shape. And this is something very easy. I mean, this is not so hard. Um, you could do it like this, like that. This will be the waist, the hip, like that. And then you do the legs joints like that shoulders the head and then the v-shape all right so when you do that v-shape then you start adding the outline of the legs and that's what we're going to do you start doing the outline oh man let me do this again hold on because it's just a camera angle do this again. You start off with the shape of her body right here, the waist, and then here's the hip area, and then you do the, the joints, the legs, and do the V-shape, and do the shoulders, and then the head and the shoulders right there. So all you got to do now is you do the contour. And see how little by little it's turning into a figure. Like that, see? The breast will be around here. So let's look at the... F yeah, it's pretty much the same. Except that the hips are a little bit wider than my, my hips. Yeah, I did mine a little bit smaller. I should have just made it a little bit, yeah. Well, I probably could fix that. I keep forgetting that this phone is vertically, so maybe some part of the drawings you won't see. But I did it again just in case. All right, so, all right, here we have the finished process, the penciling. Look at the penciling on that. That is incredible. And here is the uh, finished process. All right, let's skip the other ones. That's it. So you have an idea how these books are. Um, you can actually find this by Walter Foster and I still got to get the one from Spider-Man that, which is the old classic one, which, um, I love the, uh, the technique on that. And first I want to get the book. So we actually, that way we could review the book and we could do some tutorial of the book and it's how to draw Spider-Man Walter Foster. I got to look it up and probably order it, have a friend of mine order it and we'll work it from there. All right, so the next uh, video uh, we're going to do is this book by Stan Lee. Um, the only thing about this book is it's the step-by-step -step process is not very, very good. There are some things good about the book, and there are some things that just is just a failure. So I'll explain that in the next video. Well, guys, thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next video later on. So keep practicing and never give up.